All right, so we're here with Zosimo and, uh, and Jim looking at some budding on apples. So this is a traditionally early August uh, project out on the nursery, is that right? Yep, it's the month of August we spend doing budding. And uh, we do chip budding, which is the fastest way to do it, really, uh, we found. As, uh, and it's a very simple process. Some people call it bud grafting. Uh, sometimes the word grafting gets involved in this, but this is this is called chip budding, and uh, basically uh, you take a very a, a small bud, the bud off the the, uh, the cutting, which sometimes you can call cyan wood, um, and you make a cut in the rootstock, and then you take the bud off the stick and you put it in that cut. And the idea is to try to get it as close to the same size as possible. And then you wrap with budding tape. The, uh, it's very important that at least one side of the bud matches the side of the rootstock. And they will uh, grow together. Then uh, after about 30 days, we come in, we cut the tape off. And then the whole plant stays like this until spring the bud hopefully alive everybody's happy and then in March we will cut the top off and the bud will then grow and make the finished tree okay so why do you cut the top off next spring well because then uh, you don't want to cut it off now because you have, you, you have disease problems potentially disease problems that could go into the bud from the open wound um, so we do it in the spring so the plant is starting to grow and then uh, the, the, bud be, the bud, for example, in this case, this is a, a, a red-fleshed apple called Era, E-R-A. Uh, it's a new one out of Switzerland. And uh, th these, uh, the, I think this rootstock is, it's a dwarfing apple rootstock, and so we will have a dwarf red love apple. And so the, the reason behind cutting it off at all is so that we get the scion genetics from the bud the new bud right rather than this rootstock that it's right, currently on right if you if you didn't cut the top uh, you wouldn't have the, the variety you want you just have the rootstock and uh, and the, the bud would not really grow very happily either because the rootstock the top of the rootstock would outcompete the, the bud so so like for example i like to use the example of a, of a red delicious apple everybody knows that variety Essentially, every red delicious apple in the world is the same tree. It's just on a different set of roots. <laughs> so, that seems like a big risk should there be any kind of uh, disease problem or something in the rootstock line. Well, yeah, the bigger problem usually is in the top. The rootstocks are, are many for many years have been developed and uh, they're pretty pretty good. Apple rootstock, uh, there's a lot of different ones that you can use. We try, we try to use ones that are, are semi-dwarf so that they can stand on their own. Sometimes the really dwarf rootstocks, you have to put a stake by them to hold them up, uh, which you know, for a homeowner is a little bit more of a hassle. So in this case, we're just doing the semi-dwarf apples and uh, they make nice trees. And so, how many buds are you doing a day now, Zosimo? 600, 650. Wow. So it's a, uh, you know, we used to have a person that would go along behind and wrap the bud. So the, the, the butter would bud and there would be a wrapper, but we don't have enough people to do that. So now the butter wraps too. And, uh, it's a, so is the process a little bit slower then with just one person doing both or yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah if if we had a wrapper we could probably do over a thousand buds a day but um we just don't have the staff to do it so it, it's worked out okay i mean our, our our production with three we have three people doing the budding and and we will finish it by the end of august we do doing we do apples first and then typically we'll do pears uh, peaches cherries, uh, plums. We do some other budding in, uh, in the greenhouse, like pawpaws and persimmons. We'll do uh, on smaller rootstock in a pot. So why is the budwood in the cooler? It keeps it better. 
if it doesn't dry out, then uh, you know it's just a, this is like it, it's green, and the budwood is like you take a branch off a tree right now, so it's green and it'll, it stores better if it's cool. Mm -hmm. you, know, you wouldn't want it at room temperature, outside temperature, especially if it gets hot. It, it's just not wouldn't wouldn't be good. You want the buds to be uh, fresh when you put them on the tree. Yeah, you need some actively growing tissue to be putting together there. That's right. That's right. Um, and why is uh, this August timing the the chosen time? Well, uh, two reasons. One is the, the the buds are mature now, so they'll grow. If you do it too early, the buds are too young. They haven't really fully matured, and so you're working with material that's not quite ready to grow yet. Uh, also, the rootstock is big enough. If you start, we will plant the rootstock um, in the spring, typically, uh, and then it grows during the seas during the year, and it has to get roots established and be plenty vigorous and ready to go. So August is a good time for it. So these rootstock sticks were only planted in here earlier this spring? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The other the other thing that can happen if you bud too early is that you can actually the bud it's not on apples so much but on pears and some others the bud could start growing. And that would not be good because you don't want the bud to grow at the wrong time of year. If the bud starts to growing now, there's not enough time for the shoot to become fully dormant and it could be, it's very frost tender. So I see, you want, so you're kind of looking for this sweet spot between um, immature, mature, vigorous, yet not too much vigor, yeah. this spot where you can... Uh, you, want the, you want the bud to be happy sleeping all winter. Mm -hmm. not, so not, you need not enough up. energy in there to, to get established, right, for that graft to form right. and then enough to then go dormant and wait till spring. Yep. In California, where they have different weather conditions than us, they will bud in June with the same type of bud. Their, their budwood matures so much earlier, they can actually go out and get a bud in June, bud it, and have it grow the same year. But we, we don't do that here. Sure, you just have to go with the conditions. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. This sure. is really interesting. Yeah. As you can see, this is these are raised beds covered with um, a thin plastic mulch, which it's a, a great boon to us for a number of reasons. Keeps the weeds down. Uh, we can control the moisture underneath those, underneath that plastic. So, in the past, when we didn't use it, you would, we would dig these trees. What the trees? These trees will grow next year, and we'll dig them in like November, or December. Well, what can happen in November and December? It can rain a lot, and you can have very wet soil, and you dig plants in those conditions, the uh, roots can be heavy and difficult and it takes a lot of time. This way we actually control the moisture in the soil. So even if it's raining a bunch before we dig, we, we can dig them up and uh, they're easy to get out of the soil. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So we've had a lot of uh, pretty hot days recently. Do you ever have issues with the root zone getting too hot? Not with black plastic. If you had uh, white plastic, that would be, or clear plastic, that mm -hmm. would be different. But black plastic, it actually, you know, it itself absorbs the heat. It doesn't transfer it, except just on the very surface. So you can feel underneath. I mean, now it's not so hot, but that soil is cool, actually, underneath the plastic. Mm -hmm. And it holds that moisture in, so that the aids the cooling. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah.